Everybody, good afternoon, good evening, or I guess good morning, depending on where you might be joining us from in the world today. My name is Meg Alexander. I am, as always, honored and excited to get to host another fabulous Power to Fly Chat and Learn event. Now, I can't wait to get started here and dive in with our speaker, but before we do, um, I just want to go over some quick housekeeping items. This will be especially important if maybe this is your first virtual event with Power to Fly. Um, and if that's the case, then hi! Welcome! We're so excited to meet you! Now, the love is no less real for my frequent flyers, y'all. I love seeing all of our familiar names and faces in the chat. So thank you all so much for joining us today. Now, in case you have not been to an event with us before, the biggest thing to know is these events are all about you. They're about our audience members and making sure that you all get the value that you came to get from today's event. So we encourage you to participate if you'd like. You can do that in a couple different ways. You are always welcome to turn your camera on, share your smiling, maskless faces with us safely. Um, but truly, y'all, no need to be Instagram perfect, okay? I got real fancy and, like, washed my hair today. But, like, I don't care if you're riding that four-day messy bun dry shampoo train. There is no shame in it, all right? We do not care if you are coming to us from your uh, you know, kitchen table or a corner office. It does not matter. We just want to meet you where you are. Now, if you do want to participate but not on camera, that is okay. You can always chime in in the chat. We would love, love, love to hear from you. Um, so please feel free to head over there if you'd like and let us know where you're joining from. I'm always really eager to see how far our global audience spreads. Um, I'm coming to you from Toledo, Ohio. This is land that belonged to the Fox, Kickapoo, and Potawatomi tribes in my area. So please feel free to let us know where you're joining us from. And if you know, you're welcome to share whose land you're on. Now, the big thing to know about these events is that we are recording. And what that means for you is you don't have to take notes. You get to sit back relax, enjoy the conversation that I'm about to have with Melissa, and not worry if you missed a reference or a resource that someone shared. Now, let's say that, you know, like frequently happens on these chats, uh, Melissa says something so unbelievably mind-blowing that you have to share it with a friend or a coworker or a relative. We make that pretty easy for y'all. So you can always uh, check out our recording um, on our YouTube channel. We're live streaming to YouTube right now. Hi, YouTube. Um, and you can always check out the recording there. It's posted usually within about 15 to 20 minutes of the end of the live stream, worst case scenario by end of day. Um, the other thing you can do is in about four to five business days, Power to Fly is going to email everyone with a link to where you can rewatch this recording when we post it on our website. Now, obviously, YouTube is easy. It's fun. It's fast. You can share it right away. But I really recommend that you check out the website, if only because a huge archive. We're talking everything from the beginning of Chat and Learn through today is stored there. So we're talking crazy amounts of very helpful resources for all of you for free. So absolutely recommend that you avail yourself of those resources on our website. Truly, we want to be there for you at every stage of your career from your, you know, your first internship all the way through your retirement party. So please avail yourself of those resources uh, and allow Power to Fly to support you a little bit in your job. Now, um, if you do want to participate in the chat, oh, y'all chiming in here, Lagos, we've got well, no, the English, y'all, Milwaukee, it's the only language I speak, Georgia, um, we've got people coming in from Spain and Brazil, y'all, thank you so much, I love seeing how far our audience spreads, oh, Jersey too, thank you, thank you for joining in from Jersey. Um, now, if you do want to chime in in the chat, absolutely welcome it, um, just make sure that as we are networking with our fellow attendees, and connecting with our speakers that, as always, we lead from a place of kindness and respect. Now, um, if you have questions and you wanna send them in, please, please do. You all took time out of, out of your day to be here with us live and we wanna reward you for that. So we're gonna be going over questions that you asked at registration, but if you are here and you have more questions, ask them. I'll give you a little more detail on that in just a couple minutes, um, but just know, ask early, ask often, that way we can make sure that we bring you the value you came to get from today's event. All right, now, before I introduce you to our amazing speaker, um, she is here today on behalf of Pitney Bowes. Ooh, pardon me, y'all. Um, now, probably a lot of you are familiar with Pitney Bowes. It is a company that has a lot of name recognition already. Um, but in case you are not, I really encourage you to check out their page on powerfly.com. I'm going to share links for all of this in the chat thread as we go. Um, you can learn all kinds of great stuff on Pitney Bowes' company page. There's more information about their company culture, um, some of their benefits. You can check out the events tab. That'll show you uh, recordings from past events that they have part participated in like this. Um, it'll also have registration uh, if there are any open events currently planned for them. 
Um, and then as always, you can check out the jobs tab. Um, that is where you can search and apply to roles right from powertofly.com. Now, the one thing that I want to highlight here before we move on is something called the follow network. It's this big pink follow button that you see at the top center of that page. Every company page on powertofly.com has these. Obviously, I recommend you check out Pitney Bowes. Um, but what clicking that follow button does a couple of really great things for you. Basically, what it does is it tells the Pitney Bowes team that you're interested in working with them even before you fill out an application. So this is a really, really good option if you're if you're actively seeking but don't see anything right this second that you are dying to apply for with Pitney Bowes. The other thing it does is it allows Power to Fly to take some of the weight off of you in your job search. So we will keep you from having to go back and scan and rescan and memorize job boards. And we will let you know when auto, sorry, not Autodesk, it was the last event. I'm sorry, y'all. We will let you know when Pitney Bowes posts new roles. So it's a really, really awesome way to try and make your job search a little bit easier. The other thing I like to tell people about the follow network is that even if you're not actively job seeking, adding companies to your follow network means that by the time you are curious about what roles or opportunities might be out there for you, you already have a pre like predetermined shortlist, thanks to past you, of companies that you are interested in that you know really walk the walk and talk the talk when it comes to DEIB. Companies like Pitney Bowes, perhaps. So absolutely check out that their company page. Really, really recommend that you check those uh, those resources out. It's also a really good place to find information if you're thinking about going into an interview with Pitney Bowes. Um, it's a really great way to have something to talk about that's not the latest Business Insider article that like everybody on LinkedIn is reposting. Um, so just saying, you know, there's some really awesome t stuff in there uh, that could give you an edge in your interview. So really recommend that you check that out. Now, on to the meat and potatoes of today's event. I'm very excited to introduce you to our speaker. Now, Melissa Laswell is the VP of Global Talent Acquisition for Pitney Bowes. Um, she is a strategic executive talent acquisition leader and an OD slash OE professional with over 20 years of experience. Now, Melissa has established a reputation for leading and developing successful strategic teams that implement and drive organizations forward um, with competitive global talent strategies and initiatives. Now, from her tenure at startup Bear Essentials, to establish companies like Apple and Walmart, now on to leading the global enterprise of talent acquisition teams and strategy at Pitney Bowes. Um, Melissa has successfully demonstrated the ability to lead, develop, and inspire high-performing talent teams. Now, I think you guys will find her just as fascinating as I do. I'm really excited to welcome her to the stage. Melissa, what else should our audience know about you before we dive into questions today? Well, Meg, first off, thank you so much for having me today. I really appreciate it. And I'm really looking forward to having a very engaging conversation just around Agile. And I know that there was some other questions uh, that came up too as well. So I'm totally open to answering all of those questions. Um, one of the things that I did not mention, though, from my experience that I think is really important is that I actually grew up in retail operations. I started my career um, at actually leading teams in retail. And that's really where I started my foundation um, and where I got my experiences really grounded me, um, not only in my leadership philosophies, but also understanding how to serve the client, um, as well as how to have strong business acumen too as well. So that's something too that I, I like to share because it, it's very, very important. And I, I feel like it's what has made me who I am today too as well. So, yes, I'm telling you, man, the, the, the two greatest shorthands I think you can have in this world is I worked in retail or I worked in food service. Yes. You yes. can tell the people who have it. Right? <laughs> it, it shows. It's, so it's, it's so true. It definitely gives you people skills that, that you use throughout your whole entire career in life. That is for sure. So, yeah. and Meg, I think it's only appropriate that I share where I'm dialing in from, which is yeah, Bentonville, Arkansas. And everyone, I'm a born and raised Californian, moved out here to Bentonville, Arkansas about four and a half years ago. And I'm going to be actually heading east again, um, and I'm going to be moving to Orlando, Florida. So um, just keep on moving with agility, um, too, as well, even in my personal life and experiencing new and different uh, states, too, as well. So Heck yeah, about to trade what? Razorbacks for mice? So I, I mean, I don't think that's yeah. a bad trade. Yeah. 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 Yes. All right, y'all. We're going to dive into questions. Like I said, we're going to cover um, a bunch of questions that y'all asked at registration. If you have questions as we go through here, you know, you want us to dive in deeper on a, you know, a subject or terminology that Melissa mentions, let us know. 
I will have eyes in the chat the entire time. So if you got questions or co comments, throw them in there. And if at any point you have a question or a comment that you would like raised, but you want to be kept anonymous, no problems. Just DM it to me and I got you. All right. So Melissa, let's start off with a little bit of kind of level setting here. Um, obviously the subject for today's talk is how to incorporate agile into your life, whether you exist in the tech space or not. Yes, um, yeah. So let's start off with some basics here. Um, what does agile mean in this, you know, in this situation? Um, and what should people realize are kind of like the, the building blocks that we're going to um, be working from to start today? Yeah, that's a great question, Meg. And so let's let's start with grounding with some principles. So agile, when we look in the Webster's Dictionary, it means nimble, flexible. Um, and when we think about agile, there's a couple of different things. There's the methodology, then there's project management, and then there's mindset. So um, when we think about agile, um, it was, and I'll give a little history lesson. How about that? <laughs> so agile has actually been around since the 1970s. However, um, about 17 years ago, there were um, 17 software um, engineers and practitioners that came together and they created the Agile Manifesto. And the reason why they did that is because they really wanted to not only put together some framework, some core values and principles to be able to help others learn how to be software engineers, but then also how to help others do it too as well and ground themselves in that philosophy. So there are four values and there are 12 principles. And that's really how Agile started and really where it really took off was really in the early 2000s. So again, like I mentioned, um, you know, we hear Agile being thrown around a lot, um, but it's really based and grounded in those methodologies. So the values and the principles, but then also also, it's a mindset as well as also project management too, as well. All right. Excellent. Love to love to have a good baseline to start with. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So let's talk about your experience with it. How did you yeah. first learn about and apply agile methodologies? Yeah, that's a great question. So the way that I actually um, first learned about Agile was actually through traditional education. It was when I was getting um, my master's degree and learning how does that show up in organizations? Because, um, you know, software engineers, 86% of software engineers actually apply Agile um, into their work and their everyday values and principles that they adhere to on a regular basis. But what we've learned is that Agile is actually applied in any organization and can be applied in any um, position too as well. And so, um, you know, I started um, learning about it and I started realizing I'm applying this every single day just with the agile mindset that I have, that I have a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. And so I started applying it really in every single um, position that I've been in. I think one of the core um, principles and values that, that I have is that I'm constantly challenging status quo. And I look for organizations um, that are constantly innovating and that are not stagnant, that are looking at ways to um, continue to produce results for their customers that are continuing to, to ideate and challenge and think of new ways that they can develop as a company um, to be able to serve their customers. And so because of that, that's something that has always resonated with me. And it's something that I found a lot of interest in. And then, um, you know, I'm a constantly curious. And so I am always looking um, at research. And um, I also took some additional certifications too as well to really learn and be grounded in these principles too as well. So again, I think it's been a mixture of learning the theories and the philosophies, but then also being able to apply that through experience. And I think that that's the most important thing too, because sometimes theories are great on paper, but when you go to apply them in real life, it doesn't always show up the way that <laughs> the theory maybe explains that it should. And so again, um, you know, because in a lot of ways, when we show up to work and we're working in organizations, we're working with people and people have different values, beliefs, and goals and organizations and companies have different values, beliefs, and goals. And so sometimes applying those theories um, doesn't always work in all of those situations. So again, I think it's something that you learn also through experience too as well. Yeah. I mean, that makes a ton of sense. 
Um, all right. So I promise this is not a question that I'm asking only for my personal benefit. Uh, but how can we practice agile in like our everyday lives? Yeah. Yeah. If we don't yes. use it in a professional life, what does it look mm -hmm. like? Yeah. So again, it kind of goes back to what I was sharing about having an agile mindset. And um, the way that you are able to go about doing that is really being open to new and different things and being able to be a lifelong learner. Um, so asking a lot of questions, um, learning, um, not being okay with status quo, asking the reasons why behind um, things that you're seeing and experiencing. It's having new and different experiences, being open to those experiences. I think it's also being open to feedback and asking for feedback. That's extremely important when you think about growing and developing even in your own career um, is by getting feedback from those around you as well as from your leadership team to really understand what are some of the things that you need to do differently to continue to develop on your own career path. I think that that is extremely, extremely important. Um, I also think, too, that, you know, having very clear goals um, around your own um, journey and what's important to you as far as with your career um, is very, very important. And I, I think that um, as far as when you think about being agile, even with your career, um, you know, success, I, I think, is defined in many different ways. Um, and a lot of people, even with their career paths, think of success as I have to keep moving up. Right. But I think that when you think about success, it can be defined in many different ways and your career path can be defined in many different ways where your experiences could be moving up. They could be moving sideways. They could be, you know, actually taking on a new experience that's maybe um, below the level that you're currently in because you're learning something new. And so I think it's being open and receptive to all of those things and taking on um, that any new experience you get, um, that you're going to learn something new and being open to that, I think is really, really important. And so when you think about, you know, agile in your career, that's the way that I see it and how I define it. I like that. And I mean, I, I, there's so many points in this where I literally should just start throwing up like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Every time I agree with you, because like, you know, it really is true. Change is the only constant in life, right? Yeah. If you can't get used to change, life is going to seem a whole lot longer and a whole lot more difficult than you think. Absolutely. Than it Absolutely. Could be. Yes. Um, and I, th I think it really highlights the fact that, you know, if you know that change is coming and you know, you're not gonna be able to prevent it, might as well get on board with it, you know, learn something new, figure out what it is that you didn't know before um, and try and find, find the fun in it. Seriously. Mm -hmm. Cause like, truly you can't, you can't stop things from changing. You might as well have a good time with it. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's talk about some Here, of the basics. Meg, just for a point too, oh, as well, yeah. sometimes even with change, sometimes it's stepping back and having a level of, a, of self-awareness too, as well around, why am I, um, why am I challenging this change, right? What is it about this that, you know, I'm fearful of, right? And I even think about to you why sometimes, you know, agile fails in organizations. And a lot of it is because people are afraid of change and that's what it is. And there was a lack of acknowledgement and recognition that the change is happening. Um, there isn't, you know, a, a broader discussion around what are the goals, the vision, the direction that the company is moving, which is the reason why things are changing. Right. And I, I believe that everyone struggles with a little bit of ambiguity, right? And change is ambiguous. Um, it's bringing something new into your, into your world that you're not used to, and that's going to be new and different. And to your point, it's about embracing it and knowing, okay, this is new, this is going to be different, but I'm going to learn something from this. And I'm okay with learning something new and being uncomfortable. And that's the other piece around it is it's being uncomfortable. And a lot of people don't like being uncomfortable. <laughs> and um, that's where too, and a lot of organizations don't like being in the situation where they're uncomfortable. And so again, that's where um, I, I think the agile mindset and the growth mindset forces you to be uncomfortable and adapt to the environments that you're put in and say, okay, I'm going to take this, I've got this, and I'm going to learn from it. I absolutely agree. I mean, 
it doesn't matter whether you come from maybe the Buddhist model of existence is suffering, or you come from the existential model or, you know, whatever it is yeah. when he, when he gets down to it, right. It's this, uh, this fear that like change because it's different is automatically going to be worse. Mm -hmm. And something that my therapist told me that sticks with me every freaking day of my life is the difference between excitement and anxiety is literally whether you think it's going to go well or you think it's going to go poorly. Mm -hmm. Your brain can't tell the difference. The chemicals that it's sending are the exact same thing. It's just whether you are hopeful or a bit pessimistic. And don't get me wrong, your girl loves to be pessimistic when the moment calls for it. Um, but truly, like trying, trying to shift your mindset, especially when it comes to something that you can't change, you can't stop, you don't have a say in, trying to change your mindset is a really great practice just for like existing on the planet. So Absolutely. I highly recommend this to everybody. Yes. Yeah. And I think too, Meg, something else that you brought up and it's control what you can control. Right. And I think that that is so critical and so important that, um, again, that you take ownership around, this is what I know that I can do and how I can face the situation because everyone can control their own reaction and their own behaviors to a challenge that is put in front of them. And by having an agile and growth mindset means that you're embracing that challenge. You're taking it head on and you're thinking through how do I become the spark that lights that match? How am I the one that goes ahead and takes this opportunity that's been presented in front of me and makes something good out of it? Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. Let's talk about some of the ways that you can encourage a more reluctant team uh, mm -hmm. to perhaps be a bit more agile. Um, is this, have you experienced this like, you know, in your work life or, um, you know, what, what do you recommend people do in this situation? Yeah. So again, I think it goes back to what we're, what we've been discussing, right. Is that, um, it's new, it's different. And what I always want to, to find out, and I have experienced this before. And I, I think the reason why a lot of people are apprehensive is because they don't understand what it means. Right. So I think a lot of this is, is foundational around building learning and providing training around what is it that we're trying to accomplish, right? What is the goal? And then how can we be agile? What does that mean, right? Because again, if it's from a place of fear, people will automatically reject it, right? And when I think about from an organizational standpoint and how do you help drive change and how do you help drive an agile mindset and mentality in an organization, you have to provide clear goals. You have to provide the mission, the vision, the purpose around what are you trying to accomplish? How are you trying to accomplish it? And what you need from individuals and in the organization. So there needs to be clear roles and responsibilities aligned with those goals. There also has to be clear accountability and ownership, right? There needs to be um, where everyone understands this is what my role is in the process and here's how I'm going to be held accountable and here's what I'm going to do to help enable this, this change or to help influence with this project or um, to be able to um, move the organization forward. Um, also at the crux of this too is leadership. It's important that leaders embrace and adopt um, the change and the principles because also having an agile um, culture um, means that you embrace failure and that you help people fail fast and often and that you help them learn from the experiences. But that goes back to culture. And if as a leader, you are not supporting that culture, or if that mindset is not supported, people will not be able to be innovative. They will not be able to apply these type of um, working in an agile way because they're afraid of failing. Um, and they feel like they'll be reprimanded for it. And so again, it's building that culture um, too as well. Um, also something that really drives agility too as well is by having self-organized teams. And what I mean by that is teams that are empowered to work together, that are able to collaborate and really focus on the goal. Um, and that as leaders, you allow them to make decisions. You allow them to formulate their opinions and strategy. And there, there's that level of 
trust from leaders. And so again, I think all of that is so critical and important. And those are some of the, the foundational principles of how agile is either successful or how it actually ends up being um, thwarted in an organization because those principles are not upheld and supported. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense, right? You know, one of the things we talked about early on was the transparency aspect of this, because mm -hmm. if you're asking people to do something new and different, mm -hmm. you want them to have that trust in you, right? Yeah. Either trust that this will be better than whatever we were doing before, mm -hmm. and trust that if it's not better, this will be acknowledged mm -hmm. and we won't stop the process here. Um, and uh, honestly, I feel like a lot of it comes from, you know, when you're trying to change something, the, the litany that you hear a ton is, well, that's not how we do it, that we've always yes. done it like this, yeah. or it's always done yeah. gone like this. Yeah. And, you know, you really do have to challenge that mindset. It's like you said, you know, that, that culture of, of, of uh, being able to fail, fail fast mm -hmm. and fail forward. Our brains are not wired to learn from success. We just don't, it's not yes. a thing. So if you want a company, like if you want a, a group of people to, to do something different or to, to solve a problem in a way that they have not solved it before, you can't keep doing the same things that you did, which means mm -hmm. you have to do new things. And some of those are going to fail. Yeah. So it's, it's not only trying to make sure everybody's on board with the process and you're being as, as a uh, transparent as possible about mm -hmm. it. But it's also trying to, in some cases, completely change the culture of an org that maybe didn't think at all about failure before. And now you're saying, well, we're going to be agile. Okay, but are you addressing the underlying culture of we don't accept failure? Yes, yes. And, and that's a huge part of it. And, you know, I've mentioned to you just, you know, how open communication and feedback is also very critical to the success um, around having an agile culture too, as well. Because again, um, part of the crux of this is learning and it, it's learning again through failure. It's learning, what am I doing well? Maybe where do we need to pivot? Where do we need to adjust um, as we're working through this, this project? Project, or as we're addressing this problem, how do we need to adapt and change to meet our customer? And one thing I'll share is that, of course, being an HR, um, our customer is our employees. And more specifically, um, in talent acquisition, it's our candidates, right? So we need to constantly be evolving and changing and addressing what do our candidates find value in? How do we support them? How do we make their process easier um, to apply to our company and want to come and join Pitney Bowes? And it's, it's so critical and important that you're constantly incorporating that feedback to ensure that you are delivering what, what the end goal is and what the original goal was that you set out to produce. Um, I think something else um, that's really, really important as we're talking about, you know, agile principles and maybe in situations where um, you're encountering resistance, right? Um, like I mentioned, um, be that spark that lights the match. Sometimes don't sit back and wait for someone to, to come and tap you on the shoulder. If you see what I like to call as a hot potato issue, where literally, I don't know if anyone remembers that game, maybe I'm dating myself, where you have the hot potato that's playing or that's playing the music and you're passing it around to everyone. And then once the music stops, you have the hot potato. Don't wait for that. If you see something in your organization that needs to change, be the catalyst for that change. Raise your hand and say, I see this as a problem. And here's the solution that I think would be the right solution for this issue. And be the one that takes ownership of it. Because unfortunately, in organizations, sometimes they're waiting for people to be the ones that spark that change and that spark that innovation to say, hey, I see this and I acknowledge that this is a problem. And I, I know everyone else acknowledges that it's a problem too as well, but I'm going to be the one that takes this on. And that ownership mentality will serve you incredibly well. Yeah, of course. Um, we've got some great questions coming in in the chat, y'all. So yeah. a bunch of these we are going to touch on um, as we go through our questions here, but please, please keep sending them in. I'm, I've got eyes on all of them and I'm jotting them down so that way we don't get anybody skipped. We'll try and get to as many of, our, of your questions as we can today. Um, all right. So one of the things that we talked about earlier on was this idea of success and that it looks different for everybody. You have to kind of think about what it means for you particularly. Mm -hmm. 
and that it doesn't always look like ascending the career ladder. So if we're going to talk about this idea of, of career growth, and it's not just vertical, mm -hmm. um, we're talking about outward growth, right? Horizontal. Yeah. Um, what should people know about horizontal growth when it comes to their professional life? Yeah. So I, I think it, it, and again, when I think of horizontal growth, right, you're, you're saying, I want to be an expert in my field and I want to be a key player. I may not necessarily want to climb the corporate ladder, right? That doesn't, that isn't something that interests me, but I want to make sure that I'm an expert. What I would share with those individuals is that's great. Um, organizations need subject matter experts. They need individuals that understand, um, you know, their craft, that they understand it well, that they have those fine-tuned skills and ability in their specific roles. And so what I would challenge those individuals with is own your development. And this is really for everyone. Um, don't let someone else own your development. You need to be an active participant in your development. And what I would say is go out, continue to research, learn, never sit back and say, like, I know everything, because I will tell you, <laughs> there's always something to learn. Um, I won't share when I got my master's degree. It was a while ago. Um, but that would be something for me if I was not a constant learner to be like, oh, I have my master's degree. I understand everything about organization development. No, I actually don't. It's constantly evolving and changing because organizations are continuing to evolve and change. And so it's incredibly important that you continue to take courses, learn, read books um, in your areas of, of expertise, reach out to other individuals that are in your field that you can maybe learn something from, get different perspectives, get different points of view. All of that is going to help you continue to evolve and grow in your craft and continue to make sure that you are also looking at things in new and different perspectives and also continuing to learn as the environment around you continues to evolve and change because behavior is not static. Organizations are not static. And so it's so important. People are not static. And so you have to make sure that you're continuing to um, find new and different ways um, to be able to grow. And I think that comes through experiences um, and asking um, for new experiences. I think it, it comes into tapping into networking and researching and um, learning more about the area that you are currently in and the position that you're currently in. I think that that's incredibly important. And that's learning agility. <laughs> um, so, yeah, yes. Can't I honestly, I've got nothing better I can add to this. So we're not going to keep keep uh, belaboring the point there. Um, all right. Let's talk a little bit about outside the working world. Um, a lot of us may or may not have agile methodology um, experience when it comes to our professional lives. And regardless of that, we might still be going after roles that do want you to have those skills. So let's say you are existing in a professional environment that does not, you know, is not agile compatible. Um, are there any ways that we can implement these ideas or practice these things in our personal lives or in our home lives to build up that experience or at least be able to talk about, you know, uh, that application into our personal lives in an interview setting? Yes. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think it, it goes back to what I shared, right? It's understanding that the methodologies and the theories. So there's a lot of information out there on agile. I mean, you could even just type into Google and say, what is agile? And there are, a, there's a ton of information out there to be able to look at. So I say you can do your own personal research to be able to help you. But when I think about um, mental agility, right? And I, I think that that's where that kind of taps into your personal life because there's a level of EQ around this. And when I see EQ, I mean emotional intelligence. So when you're thinking about having an agile um, or and an, an, being mentally agile, you're thinking about what is my um, self, um, or I'm sorry, what is my um, 
view of how I see myself in situations? And then how is my external self being perceived by others? And I, I think that when you think about agile and how you're growing and you're developing and you're putting yourself in new situations, you have to ask yourself, how am I being perceived in these situations? And how am I perceiving myself in these situations? And making sure that you're um, being very open and receptive um, to feedback and thinking through like, how do I continue to grow and develop and see things and have new experiences that will allow me to continue to evolve, um, I think, even as an individual and a person. And when I think about, you know, personal life and incorporating, you know, work and personal, and a lot of it too, is it's very important around the wellness factor and making sure that you're incorporating wellness and taking care of yourself. And that's one thing um, that that here with my team at Pitney Bowes, we talk about all the time is putting your own oxygen mask on first, taking care of yourself. Because if you have that level of understanding around who you are as a person and your true authentic self, you will have a higher level of emotional intelligence. And you'll understand when you receive feedback, um, you'll already Already be expecting it because you understand as you're reflecting on that interaction or how you showed up that day at work, you know what the feedback is going to be because you've already been thinking about it and how to address it and how to learn from it and how to move forward. So I think that that is incredibly important um, factor as you're, you're thinking through all of this and really thinking about incorporating even agile into your, your personal interactions um, with individuals and even how you interact with individuals at work too, as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm reading the comment thread as we yes, go here because yeah. y'all are, oh my gosh, bringing the fire in these comments. Um, <laughs> and actually, I have a really, this one's really good. Joel had commented um, asking, would you say that the bigger focus for overcoming fear of encouraging people to be comfortable with agile learning should start mm -hmm. with empathy since the biggest mental health enemy can that can impact us is feeling isolated i think this is a pretty you know emotionally intelligent observation i um, agree <laughs> great question joel right? and i i think this is one of the things that I've even learned about being a leader. And I, I think it's it's also one of the most challenging things to be a leader is when you have difficult situations or when you have times when you are leading through your team through challenging situations. And I'm thinking of during COVID and all of the external factors, all the social unrest, everything. That was a very challenging time to be a leader. And um, I'm thinking of the, the level of emotional intelligence that you have to have as, as a leader to be able to help your team through that and um, to help them embrace and adapt and change um, and, and focus um, during times of very, very difficult times in people's personal and professional lives. And so, um, again, I, I think empathy is, is critical and it's important, not only as being a leader, um, but just in your, your everyday interactions with, with humans <laughs> in general, um, whether it's your personal life or your professional life. And I think it serves very well, right? Because you're meeting people where they are. And everyone is at different places. And even when I think about um, agility and sometimes the fear, right, of the unknown and not understanding what it is or how to adapt it or how to use it, it comes from fear. Um, and fear can be very powerful, like we've discussed, right? It basically with fear, it stops you in your tracks and it makes you not want to proceed, right? Because you're so uh, unsure and uh, afraid of what, what the outcome will be, right? Whether it's failure or, um, you know, what are people going to think of me? Or there, there's so many different reasons why people decide not to proceed with something. And so I think that, again, um, it, it's so important um, to, to lead with empathy and have that level of emotional intelligence to, again, meet people where they are. And that's why even when I talk about encouraging change, right? And um, it's meeting people where they are and helping to seek to understand around 
why do people not want to change? What is the catalyst behind this? Why, why is everyone okay with status quo? What's the reasoning and the rationale behind that? Is it because maybe someone raised their hand before and brought up this as a problem and then everyone shot them down and didn't embrace the discussion? So again, there's always reasons why. And I think seeking to understand is so critical and so important so that you get to the bottom and the crux around what is the root cause around what is causing individuals to feel that the way that they feel and how do you help embrace that and help get them to change through meeting them where they are. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry. I felt like I answered multiple questions no, all no. in one. <laughs> you're, not, you're not kidding. Like, well, and so many of these questions are interconnected. So like, they are, they absolutely yeah, are. Ab yes. Like we can't yeah. talk about this without talking about that. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm right yes. there with you. Yeah. Um, we did have a question from the chat. This person wants to know if you could specifically talk about how agile and innovative practices are, are ingrained in Pitney Bowes. So could you give us like an example from your, your day to day, um, that, that shows how y'all practice this? A hundred percent. Yes. And thank you, um, to whoever asked that question to as well. So, um, actually when I started with Pitney Bowes, so I've been with Pitney Bowes now for a year and a half or I'm sorry, a year and nine months now. <laughs> and um, when I started, this was one of the first things um, that as a new leader to the organization, one of our core principles uh, that we believe in and foster here is innovation. And so agile was something that naturally was going to be embraced um, because we, we want to challenge status quo. We want to continue to deliver on um, meeting the needs of our customers. That's always something that is a focal point for us. And so when I came in, one of the first things that I did was I trained my team on agile methodologies and agile project management and specifically to agile project management, scrum methodologies. So learning how to do sprints. Um, so one of the first things that we did, even as a leadership team and an extended team, was we started doing gap analysis. So I thought through, okay, what is our vision and purpose need to be moving forward here as an organization and as a global talent organization? And that was to be a best-in-class talent acquisition organization. So how did we get there? So we looked at everything from our processes, procedures, practices, tools that we had. And then we put together um, as a leadership team and team, what was it that best in class looks like? How do we define that? And then we had a gap analysis that we arrived to around where are we at today? Where do we want to be in the future? And so as we started to look through all of that, we realized okay, there's pieces of work and there's bodies of work here that we need to address and attack. And so what we did was we started taking bits and pieces and we started putting that into practice with standing up agile projects, <laughs> um, which were in the form of sprints using the Scrum methodology. And so um, again, in the past year and nine months, we have been able to accomplish a lot. And we have been able to deliver value not only to our internal customers and stakeholders, but also to our candidates and our hiring managers. And not to mention, um, we have a highly, highly engaged talent acquisition team. And a lot of that is built upon the framework of engagement and trust. Um, we have built um, a very a lot of psychological safety where people are able to share feedback and know that their feedback is going to be embraced, that it's going to be addressed, um, because there is nothing worse, I will say, than asking for feedback and then as a leader, not addressing it. Um, and so again, part of this, so we have annual engagement um, it surveys that, that we do. And so what we do as a team is at the end of the engagement, once we get the results back, um, we actually sit down, we look at what are the key themes from the feedback. And then as a team, we address what was the feedback and then what are some of the things that we're going to do to put into practice to address 
that feedback. So we actually put together our action plans and everyone is a part of it. So again, you have provided feedback. Now we're helping enable you to be a part of the solution as the feed, as part of the feedback. And that is at the crux of creating a very agile environment because you're taking feedback, you're addressing it, you're creating a culture that embraces the feedback, that supports um, constantly being um, pivoting and being nimble. And um, also you're being supportive of people trying new and different things and creating an environment where, again, if you fail, you fail fast and fail often, you learn from your mistakes and you move forward and you're not reprimanded from it. We see it as a learning experience. And so, again, I think all of those things are critical and important, but they're also part of my beliefs and my values as a leader that I bring to the organization, which is, I think, the reason why we've been able to a, a, been able to um, support our, our candidates and our, our customers and our hiring managers in the ways that we've been able to is because of this environment that's been created and supported. Yeah, of course. I mean, when I heard you say psychological safety, I was like, well, obviously, I mean, like, how would we not, how did it take us 42 minutes before we would utter the <laughs> word psychological safety? Yes. Because yeah. yeah, I mean, like, it's not just, it's one thing to ask for feedback, it is quite another to accept the feedback, to acknowledge the feedback, and then to take action on that feedback. Um, Diane had chimed in in the chat saying, this is very true. Organizations need to address the feedback and reply to it. Even if the feedback is not actionable, it needs to be mentioned and explained to the employees what's going on or why it can't be actioned upon. Mm -hmm. And this is huge, right? It's, it, it, there's right. nothing less like more disingenuous than, what do you think? Yeah. And then just not even listening to the answer. Like it's just mm -hmm. garbage. Right. So right. I very much appreciate yeah. this. Yeah. And I think the other piece around that is um, you're basically shutting people down um, by not taking action on it. You're telling them your voice and your opinion doesn't matter. I've asked for it, but I really didn't want it. And that is the worst thing that you could do. It's actually, it's actually better as an organization if you don't ask for the feedback, if you're not going to take you know, action on it. Um, and it's because too, it's your, your people are your most important, valuable asset at a company. And in order to continue to evolve that company, you have to listen to your talent, and your people. And that's, that's the whole reason why people are recruited and brought to the organization is because they bring a perspective, they bring skill sets that are needed for that company. And so, again, I, I think it's so critical and valuable that, um, that there is that environment. And I think it's, it's critical for organizations to, to, listen to their employees. It's very, very important. Absolutely. Um, people chiming in here are saying that the only time they were asked for feedback from a company is when I gave my two weeks notice. I cannot tell you how many times that's happened to me. Yeah. Um, truly, like, you know, it is something that you, that it needs to be cognizant. It needs to be intentional. Mm -hmm. yes. um, yeah. We've also got someone chiming in from the chat. I would be remiss if I didn't chime this out. Michael chiming in saying that Melissa coached, mentored, and set the bar with agile and sprint mentality with me years ago and is a standard I try to live up to. She is an amazing leader, passionate teacher, and works with you to deliver a culture uh, of delivering exceptional results. Thank you, Michael, for sharing that with us. Um, high praise of Melissa. And I, I mean, having known you for all of 47 minutes, I can absolutely like agree with this wholeheartedly. So yeah, love this. Um, okay, let's, we've got about 10 minutes left in today's chat. So I want to make sure we touch on any of the areas we have somehow left untouched on <laughs> up until now. Yes. Um, let's see here. All right. What do you think is the best way to learn agile methodologies? You came to it from traditional education, yeah. but what do you think is the best way to learn it? Yeah, you know, I, again, I think it's it's just being curious, right? And and asking individuals that um, have experience in agile. And I, I think it's researching the topic. I think it's reading articles on the topic. You know, um, not to give a plug, but you know, LinkedIn Learning has some great, great, um, uh, quick 
videos around agile, how to demonstrate it, how to apply it. Um, but I think a lot of it is through experience. Um, like I said, I mean, it's one thing to read a theory and, and read how it's supposed to be applied. But until you actually apply it and try it and test it, that's how you learn. You learn through experience. And so, you know, I would just challenge everyone, do your research and homework and then figure out, like, how do I apply this? How do I how do I use this in my everyday? Because practice makes perfect. And again, moving from um you know, a fixed mindset to a growth mindset and an agile mindset, it takes practice. And so, um, again, I, I think it's a mixture of learning, doing your homework, and then applying it and learning through experience. Yeah, absolutely. It very much reminds me of what we were talking about um, when it comes to like horizontal growth in, you know, professionally. Yes. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we've had I, I get to talk to a lot of people about a lot of different subjects and this one relates crazy this week, especially um, because, you know, it's that idea of if you're, if you're going to have an agile mindset, you have to have that curiosity. Right. But if you're thinking in terms of like growing your, your skill set or networking or whatever, it doesn't have to be an all or nothing kind of thing. Right. You can follow your curiosity where it leads. Um, we talked to somebody a couple of weeks ago who was talking about, um, you know, their own professional development and how they stay up on, on, you know, industry trends and they were in tech specifically. So they talked about how like, you know, two months ago, AI was the only thing they thought about for like three weeks straight. And that was literally all they were talking about and looking into outside of work and whatever. And that was great. And then they woke up the next morning and were like, you know what? I'm actually really curious about how machine learning works. So like, as you're thinking in terms of, of a continuing uh, education mindset and, and being curious lifelong, these don't have to be like, you don't have to pick a career or pick a subject. And that's the only thing you're going to be curious about. Mm -hmm. You know, the, I like the idea of, of agility, not just when it comes to work or home, but also when it mm -hmm. comes to that curiosity, when it comes to learning, mm -hmm. you know, we our our brains are engaged best when we are interested, not afraid and having fun truly play is the best way to do this. And if you're following mm -hmm. the curiosity, it's a really good way to make sure that you are not just spinning your wheels. You're learning, you're actively learning things as opposed to just spending time checking boxes effectively. Yeah. 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 All right. We got less than uh, seven minutes left. Um, I wanted to save some time to talk a little bit more about Pitney Bowes specifically, um, especially considering y'all's values. So I'm going to give you the stage here. Um, but I want to know a little bit more. What would you like to share with us uh, about Pitney Bowes and what really drives y'all? Oh, where do I begin, Meg? <laughs> so, um, you know, our culture, um, it's it's such an amazing culture. And it, it's one of the reasons why I came and joined this company and why every single day I wake up and I'm just so energized um, to be working for this organization. And our four core values um, here at Penny Bowes are client, team, win, and innovate. And, you know, what made me join the company was the people and the team. And I think the openness to innovation, I've been talking about my personal values that I subscribe to. And that was music to my ears that here's a company and organization that embraces people and puts people and the customer first, right? But then is also open to innovation, to change, to challenging the status quo. And that was what was so important to me um, was I'm in the, the business of people and I wanna be in an organization that supports and focuses on people, on growth and development and making sure that we foster an environment where um, failure is okay and, and learning is embraced um, and that, and again, that's important to me. And so that very much resonated with me and wanting to join the organization was around the culture piece. Well, and it makes a ton of sense. And frankly, you know, I've gotten to host a lot of events with Pit and Bows uh, over the years. And so I've gotten to talk to a lot of people from different parts of the business. And it's not that I, I always learn new things on this, but it's not like I'm surprised if that makes any sense. You know, um, it's it's things that are new information, but they totally track with yeah. with not just the company culture that y'all talk about, but obviously what gets brought in front of us at meetings like this. Um, so I very, very much appreciate that look inside. Um, one thing that I wanted to make sure we save time for here 
what haven't we talked about? Is there an area that you were really hoping we could touch on that we haven't? A question that you wish people asked about the subject that they don't, you know, where's the hole here? Yeah. So I feel like we've covered a lot today. And I also know that the audience um, today was coming from very different um, levels within their organization, different backgrounds, experiences, knowing, you know, different varying levels of knowing what agile is, how to practice agile, all of that. So what I would share, um, Meg, is that I am happy to come back and have more specific discussions around going narrow and deep because I've seen some of the questions that have come in where they're asking specifically around how do you put agile methodologies into practice, right? Or how do you use agile project management in an organization? And those are topics that you go narrow and deep on, right? And so again, I am happy to come back and share um, specifics around that, how we have embraced and adopted um, agile here at Pitney Bowes. And in, and in fact, I'll share um, hot off the presses. Um, I am currently um, I'm currently training our whole entire HR organization on agile methodologies and having an agile mindset, how to use agile project management and how do we become more agile as an HR organization? And um, again, all of these things are so critical and important because, again, um, we're in the business of people and we need to be addressing our clients and our organization's needs. And the way to do that is to incorporate feedback, to constantly be changing, to constantly challenge status quo. And so, um, again, I, I think all of that's um, very critical and important. But I'm happy to come back and, and go narrow and deep on some of these additional um, subjects too as well. But the true recruiter in me though, one of the things that I wanted to make sure that, that I brought up because um, also Power to Fly is all about careers. And, you know, I'm in talent acquisition and I get I asked this question a lot around, you know, what is your top tip for interviewing, right? Yeah, <laughs> so I have, a couple of, I have a couple of tips that I, I definitely want to share. You know, I think being genuine and authentic, be true to who you are, because how you show up in the interview is extremely important because you're going to learn very quickly. Does this company align with my personal values and belief system? And, you know, I think be prepared, do your homework, um, do your research on the interviewer or interviewers that you're meeting with, learn more about them. Because again, these are people you're going to be working with and for. And it's very important that your beliefs, your values, how you operate, show how you show up is very similar or that you see yourself working with those individuals. So it's very, very important. And I would bring questions for the interviewers, whether it is about them, the team, or the company, or the role. And to me, like I've mentioned multiple times, culture is everything. And I have seen, you know, company and team's cultures either embrace or reject talent that does not align with their company values. And I think one of my favorite questions to ask is, what is the culture you foster and champion as a leader? And what about the company? What does the company value and champion as far as values and beliefs? And this allows me to really be able to assess um, as the interviewee <laughs> um, whether my core values align with the company and that leader's mission and vision. And, you know, we've been talking about agile today and I embrace being agile in all the principles, including having an agile mind and a growth mindset. And if I'm interviewing with a company or with a leader who doesn't embrace that, that's going to be very difficult um, to, to work in that environment, right? And so, again, I just think it's, it's so important that you understand um, just where does the company stand? Where does the leadership team stand? Because you also want to be set up for success when you start in your new company or your new role. So just my two cents. It's, it's my opinion, but um, I, it's something that that I all, I've always asked when um, I'm interviewing. So I like that. Those are good. It's all good advice. Um, you absolutely took the question right out of my head. So that's oh. fabulous. <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you. Thank yes. you for this. Yeah. 
Um, Melissa, thank you. I can't wait to have you back. I'll absolutely be, you know, bugging Rob to see how soon we can reschedule you. Um, but thank you. Thank you so much for your time, your expertise. We really, really appreciate it. And it's been wonderful to get to learn from you. Oh, well, thank you, Meg. And just thank you everyone for joining the conversation today. I hope you learned something new. I hope that um, you're able to um, take some of these learns with you as you're leaving the call today. And I hope some of this resonated. And um, again, thank you all for joining. Um, it was very nice to meet everyone virtually. So thank you, Meg, for having me today. Thank you. All right, y'all. Big, big thanks to all of our attendees today as well. Obviously, I have a job because you come to these events, but truly, I'm more proud of you for coming to these because you just took 60 minutes out of your day to be here and do something positive for yourself and your career. That is not easy in this day and age. Congratulations. Whether you are a little treat person or a gold star or a pat on the back, even if you're none of those, Meg says you should reward yourself. So congratulations. Thank you for doing this for yourself. And thank you for spending time with Power to Fly and Pitney Bowes. Now I've shared a bunch of chat or a bunch of links in the chat thread for you, um, places you can connect with us, uh, reach out on LinkedIn if you'd like. I shared a bunch of information there. Um, obviously, I also recommend that you take a look at Pitney Bowes uh, Power to Fly page. I shared the link for that as well. Um, don't hesitate to uh, to smash that follow button to make sure you have the best shot and are, are putting yourself head and shoulders above the rest of the competition. And if this was your first Power to Fly event, I'm so, so happy we got a chance to meet you. If this was your millionth, I cannot wait to see you join us for another one soon. Have a safe, happy, healthy rest of your day, week, and weekend. Cannot wait to see you back around another event quickly. Bye, y'all. Bye, everyone. <laughs>